And you're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment of The Breakfast where we take a look at the papers and try to analyze them make sense of it for what it will mean for you and I in the country. Uh, we have joining us Mr. Ezekiel Iyayetok. Good morning. Very hey, good morning. Always yes. a pleasure to be with you. Fantastic. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. And it's about labor. Wage, bill, protest. National Assembly, labor meets Tuesday as sponsor knocks unions. Workers have mandated us to declare nationwide strike, and that's according to Waba. Waits for public hearing and stop attacking me, bill sponsor tells Labour. And uh, above the banner here on the punch, it says Senate's queries 120 billion naira subsidy payment over payment to Ipman. UAE extends ban on Nigeria flights to March 20th. I know lots of people who've booked their tickets, who've bought their tickets ready to, you know, for tourism and all of that in the UAE. Sadly, uh, this has been extended to March 20th. Uh, our 42 billion yet to be repatriated from Nigeria, says MTN. That's uh, 4.2 billion rand yet to be repatriated from MTN, from Nigeria, says MTN in SA. Two out of five bank workers contract staff, MBS, okay? And uh, below the banner on the Punch newspaper, this story uh, here says Lagos starts COVID-19 vaccination by weekend. That's according to Son Wolu. Majority leader carpets Senate for dumping reps bill. NCS parades five illegal female immigrants stealing rappers and duping Nigerians. OPC tags Fanny Kaede lying merchants and misinformation expert. Using Iburu loot for Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Abuja Kano rail line unjust, and that's according to Sagi. Construction of 500 houses for 2018 Ogun flood victims begin. Ms. Anyayetok has the stories on the front page of the punch. And uh, let's begin with uh, yeah. the wage bill protest, shall we? Thank you. Um, first, one, the Bible is very clear that um, a, a laborer is worthy of his wages, okay? And this conversation must be laid based on certain fundamentals. One is that every worker has a contract. The contract is you work and you get paid. That's the contract. Secondly, it must be understood that Every worker, laborer within the civil service, which is the organized labor we're talking about, more of them, especially within the civil service, they are paid by the common patrimony of all Nigerians. Consequent upon that, one would want to put a two-way understanding one is i want to know what labor does now that sounds um uh, it, it sounds almost ridiculous but if we explore it well i really want to know what the civil servants do now it's almost common knowledge that if you get into civil service probably less than 30% of them are effectively utilized. It is within this context that I expect that while we go up in arms and defend labor and say a worker is worthy of his wages, the time has come for us to interrogate the morality of labor with respect to their productivity and if they are actually entitled to what they have. I'm not in support of people being thrown into the labor market because if you look at several reports, they say that the civil service is over bloated, they say that you don't have fit for purpose, you have a lot of people, sometimes you have a driver that is over 60 years of age, you have sometimes stories of somebody who is specially impaired but is employed as a driver, but that person has to be there because he cannot lose his job. All right, we seem to be um, losing you there, sir. Um, I'm not sure if we can quickly reconnect with you. 
um, and of course, get back into that conversation. The the you know major bone of contention you know with Labour and the federal government, and of course, the reason behind you know the protests. Uh, we uh, had a quick interview yesterday uh, with uh, Achike Chudi, um, he, who's uh, from the Trade Union Congress, um, and it, it's mostly a conversation about you know moving um, uh, the minimum wage from legislative to uh, concurrent list. Um, okay, well, welcome back, uh, Mr. Yantok. Uh, am I back to you? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted us to, you know, quickly um, get your views on the idea of, you know, the reason behind the protest. Um, uh, we can eventually, you know, maybe later, you know, talk about, you know, the effectiveness of the whole of Nigeria's civil service. But, you know, the movement of the uh, minimum wage from legislative yeah, to concurrent list, uh, exclusive, I beg your pardon, to concurrent list, um, is, you know, where the challenge really has been. Yeah. And that's the reason for, for their uh, protesting. Um, they don't agree it, it, that it, states it, should decide. It, it, the federalism that we run. Now, the economy of Lagos is not the same as the economy of Zambia. You just mute my um, video if that will help. Maybe the earning power of government on one hand and the cost of living on the other hand. This disparity makes it a little challenging for you to insist that the minimum wage in Zamfara State should be the same as the minimum wage in Lagos State or in Aquibom State or Delta State being uh, cosmopolitan, so they attract a lot of maybe investors. They also have certain advantages like Lagos State is extremely commercial. Right. Niger Delta States have um, that a little extra support from government. So when we ask ourselves what should be the, the position of government and secondly you have a position where you declare 30,000 minimum wage and for God knows how long they are not paid. So is it going to be there on paper I think the time has come when labor needs to have a very honest dialogue and interaction with their various state governments and be able to establish what is, as is done, then we'll be able to have where localized and uh, made sense of. All so right, quick, to, quickly, to because extent, I, 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 it might I, I be right for to... the federal government to remove it from the exclusive list. But let there be a general legislation which... Okay. Okay. Um, we, we must have lost him. You want to throw something else in? Um, oh. No, just the fact that uh, looking forward to the conversation with that rep I mentioned, the former president of the TUC, yes. you know, to really get to the heart of, uh, of this matter. Yeah. But, know, and it, it makes you question, you know, um, whether uh, they have genuine reasons for protest, you know, you, you know from, from the conversations, you know, should it be moved, you know, from, you know, exclusive concurrent... Um, can every state pay, you know, the agreement of 30,000? How many of them really have been able to pay? And what happens if a state says, oh... They want to pay uh, lower? Yeah, we want, we want to pay lower, you know. Uh, we don't have as much business or economy as Lagos does, and so we want to pay 12,000 naira. That, that would I be wild. I think that should be one of their... All right, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Um, the, I talk. The, the story is this, uh, first one there says, um, or Senate uncovers 120 billion naira differential in subsidy payment as a uh, Ipman kicks. Bandits killed 937, kidnapped 1,972 in Kaduna in 2020, says a report. Kaduna Central uh, records, um, Kaduna Central ra rather, records highest death toll. Security challenges cut across ethno-religious divides, says the government. Also, uh, of course, the big story there, reps want disbursement of Ibori's 4.2 million pounds uh, loot halted. Members want it returned to Delta State. Funds looted by Dari Alama Sega were returned to Plateau by us, uh, says uh, Femi Falano. And also IYC tackles federal government, says position unacceptable. Um, all right. Okorocha meets Oshimbajo overfield with Uzodimma. And also it's time to put an end to open grazing, says... Ondo Makban, reps protest eight-year power outage in Ikiti communities, and also tanker drivers block Benin or Expressway over killing of two members. We also have, of course, once again, removing minimum wage from exclusive list will turn us to slaves, says uh, Labour. 
And um, airlines cry over 12 years without airfield lighting on Lagos Airport's domestic runway. Uh, we also can see the EFCC chairman, Bauer, testifies in 1.4 billion naira oil subsidy fraud. All right, I, I want us to quickly speak, uh, uh, get your thoughts on the controversy with regards 4.2 million pounds being, uh, of course, sent back to Nigeria uh, for uh, monies that were looted by former Delta State Governor James Onanefe. Yes. Uh, there is, yes. uh, you know, I, I, go ahead, please. Just go ahead. Yes. I think it is ridiculous, it is absurd, it is unthinkable, it is immoral for the government to as much as contemplate taking the funds of Delta State to use for another project. Not just that there is an antecedence, but that number one, this is money of Delta State. How can you as much as imagine, as much as conceive, perceive the possibility of using such funds for another place, another, it's immoral, it's corruption. It should not as much as be contemplated. The money of Plateau State was returned to Plateau State. The money of, um, uh, dealt uh, of 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 um, uh, um, this other person, um, uh, Bielsa um, State, uh, Alamesia, yes, you know, Bielsa was returned to Bielsa. Why should the money of Delta State be taken to any other place except return to Delta State? The only thing that EFCC can do if they want to get smart is that look, we recovered the money. And because we recovered the money, we are going to have a commission on the money that we have recovered. And they may even want to go ahead and maybe pick out all the expenses they had incurred prior to this time. Aha, if, that, if they want to do that, it makes sense. It's recovery, it's recovery. But to say they want to use that money for, oh, no, 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 I will be one of the first people to carry a one-man placard and protest against such act of injustice. It is inconceivable. It is unfathomable. It is immoral. It's unjust. Okay. It cannot be as much as uh, be contemplated. That's my position. All right. Um, lots of interesting stories, uh, you know, to look at here. But we have to go to the nation now. It says Senate House. This is what they're saying. We will kill bill on wage negotiation. Protestant workers have nothing to fear. NLC declares nine governors anti-workers. NSC becomes public liability company. Ijo progressives demand immediate sack of a PABU over NDDC. AIB airpiece disagree on incident. UAE extends flights ban on Nigeria. Naira weakens despite new dollar policy exchanges at 484 Naira to a dollar. Protestant truck drivers block Benin Oya Road and travelers stranded. According to a 2020 report, 937 killed, 1,972 abducted in Kaduna. Reps halt action on 4.2 million pounds linked loot linked to Ibori. Also here, Bawa testifies in NIB oil subsidy fraud trial. And Undo doctors and nurses begin strike. Uh, Bia, would you like to start on this one, Mr. Edhook? Okay, number one is um, the Senate House um, uh, saying we'll kill the bill. I think the way to go is for Labour to send their representatives to um, lobby or talk with their, you know, the way a bill is passed is every House member comes from a particular constituency. So let, those, let them go for public hearing. Let Labour make a, a compulsive and then a very strong you know, um, uh, presentation. And before then, instead of the threatening, we'll go on strike, we'll go on strike. Let them engage the public. Let them let us know why this should not be the case. Because, you see, as much as labor have a right to protect their interests, we also have a right to say, look, we want due commensurate returns on investment. So labor has to, like, um, talk with us. And at the same time, we also have to um, apply the, 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 the doctrine of um, um, justice and equity. 
with that, I think that will be resolved. But there is um, one or two other matters that um, I think we should look at. And that has to do with the way we run our, our democracy. Hmm. Okay. Fabio is from a constituency, is from a state. So, so when you keep saying he should be removed, let's have the grounds on which he should be removed. Is it out of incompetence? Because just like um, you, the Ijaw Nation is looking at it, the Akwaibom constituency is also saying, this is our man. And that is that the politics that kills us. Uh, for as long as we keep doing this, is our man, remove it. We, we, we don't mind Akwaibio being removed, but tell us the real grounds and the grounds, because there are some things that he's done that you cannot um, take it away from him. That I mean, look at the NDDC building that is to be commissioned um, today, I believe. That building has been there for decades. There's something about Akpabio that you must give it to him. He has that capacity to take certain moves by the horn. And I think that um, within that context, um, he's achieved some things. There are certain things um, that he, he has not done right, like any, any other minister. But for goodness sake, let every minister show me one, two, three landmarks that they have achieved during the administration. And even the audit of um, NDDC was a major step, a major bull, though I really don't know where the, it has led us to. But for him to have as much as contemplated that, and uh, you, you know how much feathers it ruffled. So I think Akwabio is a man that has this heart that can take on anything. And I, I respect him for that. Many oh, times I don't agree with him when he was my governor. But there are certain things you must give to him that this man has that heart to take on the real hard battles. And look at the NDDC building. Hate him or love him, he has brought an end to NDDC being in a rented apartment. And to him, it's well, a major credit. You know, uh, well, I, I think, you know, there's also going to, you know, we also rather wouldn't ignore uh, the corruption allegations that have, you know, uh, swallowed the NDDC in the last few years. Um, even while he, of course, uh, was... Uh, deeply involved with the affairs of the NDDC. Um, yes, you mentioned a probe and an audit, you know, but until we see re results or we see get answers from that audit, um, you know, it's 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 also fair, you know, that people would question here and there. But I, I want you to quickly uh, speak about 937, I believe, uh, killed in Kaduna, and of course, 1,900 plus kidnapped in the year 2020 in just one state in Nigeria. Yes. I think these figures, we will make the worst mistake if we don't relate these figures to the reality of the situation we are in in Nigeria. In one state, almost 2,000 people have been kidnapped. Each of these kidnaps, they get as much as 10 million naira ransom. Some 20 million, depending on the profile. I know some are like less than 500,000 or 1 million or whatever, but on the average, the high profile. Now, this is one state. We can therefore begin to imagine the, a terrible enterprise that we can no longer continue to you know, use kid gloves and politics to do with because it has become such a lucrative enterprise that people are not going to leave it in a hurry. If anything, is going to attract some North, uh, Northerners, attract some Southerners, attract some Muslims, attract some Christians. It, it's like politics now. You know, politicians, when interest comes, they forget where you come from, whether you're North or South, Muslim or Christian. The same thing, that the bandits are starting to find a certain ecosystem, a certain community in the crime, in the extremely lucrative crime called kidnapping. So I want to say that we should leave sentiment. The time has come when we need to, as a government, be ready for collateral damage, but we must break the egg to be able to get the, the safety out for right. the, the, the omelet. Okay. Um, Ezekiel, yeah, I talk. Thank you so much once again. Uh, we always appreciate your time and your uh, views on Thanks the, so the much topics. for having me. Sorry about the, uh, the connection. No, we totally understand. All right, that's all we have for you on, uh, of course, Off the Press for this morning. We're taking a short break. When we come back, we're going back in history to tell you things that happened on the 11th of March many, many, many years ago.